impact craters. For example, the ring of rocks and dust around Saturn. Maybe in the distant past Saturn had its own moon that was exploded or crushed. All we can know for sure is that at some point this debris came from some awesome destructive power and before the biblical accounts were written. Such great devastation would have been visible for sure had mankind been around at that point. It is very possible that all of this planetary damage was caused by the last passing of the planet X, or Rahab the Destroyer. The planet itself could have been cast out of this solar system originally purely as part of the Creator's judgment upon the Luciferian angelics that resided within it, but who can say for sure? Such a passing would have caused great devastation though, and I feel sure that the scientists at the Horizon Project would agree. The angelics are immortal purely because their primary form is one of spirit. Spirit or light can only cease to exist if the Creator wills it to do so, for all spirit and light originates from the Great I Am. At their casting out and judgment they also became twisted forms of their former selves. They became the various aliens like the Tall Greys, the Draconians, the Reptilians and the Pleiadians and the like. One of the greatest deceptions around at present is that there is such a thing as neutral or benevolent aliens. All except those in the service of the Most High's will are fallen beings, plain and simple. The only reason for them to claim to be benevolent are for further reasons of deception, such as the Nasara Alien Agenda. Nasara stands for the National Economic Security and Reformation Act. For more details on this alien agenda for our planet, see Sherry Schreiner's website nasarasucks.com. Any angelic entity in the service of the Supreme Creator has no need of flying disks to travel between the planets. The only reason the fallen angelics do so is because they have lost access to that right of travel, as it requires positive energy or light to do so. Likewise, the ancient Sumerian accounts told of by the likes of Mr. Zachariah Stitchin are all from a reptilian or draconian point of view. Stitchin himself is serving the reptilian agenda when he tries to back up their claims at creating mankind. They only follow Lucifer's directives, and that is to try and twist and manipulate all that the Creator has done and turn it to their own ends. That evil being, now known by numerous names, such as the Son of Perdition or the Great Serpent, is himself the leader of the Draconian species, the elite of the various alien species. Their home planet is Rahab, Planet X, or the destroyer of worlds. The same planet that is returning to us in order to fulfill all biblical prophecies concerning the planet Earth's near future. Most likely Wormwood is caused by it rather than Wormwood being the planet itself. They are indeed masters of genetic manipulation, but they cannot create anything on their own. They have no original creative power of their own whatsoever. All they can do is manipulate whatever has already been caused to exist by the supreme and only creator. Only the great I am can cause something to come into being from nothing. This is not the same as something physical being manifested from something we cannot see with our limited visual spectrum. The demonic may use trickery such as bringing something we cannot see into our visual spectrum. Therefore, they are once again using something that already exists. This is the basis of my analysis, and I have gotten my education from that great I Am, the Supreme Creator, and His true servants upon the earth. Not from His fallen creations, who have always sought to manipulate, control, and ultimately dominate all life on this planet. Our planet. Without someone ever seeking out an education from the Creator, such as many of the so-called New Ages and their kind as an example, it has become abundantly clear over the last few decades that way too many individuals have no knowledge of how to fully test and prove their Ascended Master's statements or teachings. 
If someone simply does not know how to test them, and therefore makes no attempt to do so, they fall prey to another of the Creator's universal laws, and that is that they are first partaking at the table of demons, and are then subject to their deceptions. Part of mankind's testing for the very few that actually seek these ultimate truths is to ensure that we have all been cleansed of all fallen angelic deceptions such as religion. Someone does not even have to be born from above or born again as Christians would say to demand these beings make such a declaration as to whom they serve. One of the great deceptions over us is that they deflect mankind's interest in ever seeking out how to test them in the first place. However, that does not mean that parents should ensure their children all go to Sunday school or start praying five times a day as a ritual either, because all this does is educate them in yet further religious manipulations such as the strong delusion as described in my book, The Spirit of Jezebel, The Mystery of Iniquity and The Strong Delusion. Anyone going to church on Sunday or partaking of vain repetitions of prayers is guilty of spiritual fornication, plain and simple. Only evil men such as the serpent's evil hybrids amongst us have switched the Creator's true Sabbath day to the day of the Sun God and such things as the Christmas and Easter festivals. These things are spiritual fornication and the partaking of the spirit of Jezebel. People can huff and puff all they like, but it changes nothing. We have an eternal creator who has never changed his ways and his methods to suit us, who are merely the results of that original sin in Eden, which was sexual intercourse. Sunday Christians who say they have the light, have in reality only the light of the moon, as in the Jezebel prophecies and the moon is merely a reflection of the greatest light. Please feel free to read the chapter What Exactly Is the Spirit of Jezebel from the above book to see the truth of this mystery. Anyway, on with the analysis of Introduction to the Immortals book by Jashira, who was interviewed on the AJM recently. In the introduction, Jashira states this, the message and teachings in this book come from my own personal experience as well as from revelations I have received whilst interacting with the mortals. Unfortunately, as with most of these immortal or fallen angelic or jinn encounters, we can switch the word revelations to deceptions. No testing has ever occurred on Jashira's part and so how is she ever to come to the knowledge of the truth concerning them? It has always been the New Age agenda for these so-called masters to teach the few in order that they teach the many. In so doing, they are getting others to do their dirty work and perpetuate the deceptions. Therefore, such further statements such as all personal experiences are true and are given as examples of the manifestation of these truths it would not be correct to disbelieve in the encounters themselves, but to agree or call them truths without testing the teachers themselves is the very banana pill many slip up on. The author continues with, On a personal note, I am a teacher, not a writer. A fair statement, however, she does not realize that in first being deceived and misdirected from ultimate truth herself, she has become a mere puppet that is being used to spread their lies. Jashira goes on with, The best way to get in-depth teachings on this subject is by attending the seven level school for mastery and immortality. In doing just that, the attendees are once again partaking at the table of fallen angels or demons and jinn. Anyone doing such a thing is opening a huge spiritual doorway and surrendering precious legal ground, which the demonic entities then claim 